Right, hello and welcome everybody to another episode of Flash Jazz Cat uh, Tries to Repair an Atari Computer. Um, this uh, particular machine uh, is an 800XL as you can probably see. Um, it arrived about three weeks ago um, from a gentleman in uh, the UK. Uh, the machine was dead, uh, spontaneously dead, black screen on power up. Now the normal methods of diagnosis didn't seem to yield any results because uh, uh, the syscheck board that I always use, I'll, I'll show you that because I never tire of promoting this device, uh, syscheck 2, 2.2 um, by TFHH, uh, the wonderful Jürgen, um, he's a very nice man apart from anything else. It wouldn't run. Uh, now, of course, we've got a fully socketed board here. We're very uh, lucky. These are particularly nice boards, these ones. Revision A, um, 800XL boards, uh, everything socketed. So it was uh, fairly uh, simple to uh, pop the RAM out, uh, check the CPU. It couldn't really be easier, but nothing that I tried made any difference. And there didn't seem to be any bad chips on the board, so the problem seemed to be in the board itself. Uh, which uh, is always a bit of a nightmare and eventually I gave up on it uh, just it looked like one of those boards where something had rotted inside um, but uh, the other day um, I came back to it the owner had actually said well just hang on to it if you if you want to have another go at it or maybe keep it for spares but I prefer uh, spares are very welcome of course uh, breaker boards are very welcome but I prefer to get the thing fixed and back to the owner uh, and yesterday on Sunday uh, I was having a bit of a slow day and uh, I decided to pull this board out again. Now I've got another board in the cupboard, uh, an 800XL with an identical motherboard, fully socketed like this. And I systematically this time swapped every single chip out of this board into the relevant, uh, the corresponding socket on the other board, which worked. I didn't bother with the RAM um, because I'd already tried to run syscheck with all the RAM out of the board and it still wouldn't run. Um, so I assumed it was probably bad RAM on the board, but uh, it, it should still have worked because syscheck has uh, external RAM. So nothing worked, uh, so there was it, it, that proved that basically everything on the board worked. Uh, so for a laugh I replaced the CPU socket and the antic socket because uh, I figured that if there was a problem, there didn't appear to be a problem with the sockets, but I replaced them anyway. It didn't make any difference. Uh, so then I got the uh, multimeter out and started probing around, looking for shorts, uh, checked the power, um, I checked for shorted uh, decoupling caps, and all the usual kind of stuff, and eventually ended up on the back of the board doing a close inspection, and what I noticed, it's very odd, I've already posted on Facebook about this, I'll give you a close up here of what I was looking at. Now, if you look uh, here, there's a cluster of vias uh, just there, and the pin there right next to my finger, the actual leg of the cartridge socket, and the via right next to it were shorted together. Uh, now, with the reference board that I had, of course, I was able to measure that one, and they are not supposed to be shorted together. I didn't bother to look up what the signals are, but uh, they were actually shorted out. So I put some flux on there, uh, reflowed the, the flat pad, and that still didn't clear the short, and it was most odd. I actually had to get a craft knife between those two uh, points and actually scrape it across. I've tidied it up now. It looks very nice, and it's not shorted together anymore. Um, cleared that and all of a sudden with all the RAM off the board syscheck started up and uh, obviously found that all the RAM was bad because there was no RAM on the board and that was a primary fault the secondary fault that was one of the DRAMs these are the original DRAMs apart from this one I think it was one down here U18 or, or U16 I think it was U16 was bad so there were two problems with this board and that short just completely um, prevented the machine from starting up at all. And but the bad RAM, again, that was that was a tricky one because it wasn't just a bad chip; it actually shorted the data bus out, so the CPU couldn't start up. It would occasionally flicker, but it would it couldn't start. So uh, the board is now repaired. So obviously the owner is very happy about this, and then he asked me what we can do to improve video quality. And it just so happens that I've got a, an RGB. 
uh, and component Sophia lying around. And I asked him if he'd be interested in uh, having this in the board, and he, and he was. Uh, I also suggested UAV as a, as a sort of a cheaper option, but UAV, if you're in the UK or the EU, probably particularly particularly the UK because of the uh, draconian um, VAT and import duty. If you actually order UAV, and it's from uh, the brew, the if you actually order UAV from the Brewing Academy, that's hard to say. Brew the Brewing Academy. Um, McCrory's website in America, uh, you're looking at $20, $25, depending on the version you order, maybe $30, I forget. And then you got the shipping. There's a couple of different shipping options. And then you got the import duty. You're going to end up paying as much for UAV as you would for a Sofia from um, Simeus in Poland. So the cost uh, differential was negligible, so he decided to go with this. And I mean, the quality of RGB quality is going to be superior anyway as excellent as UAV is. So we're going to put this into uh, the 800XL. The first thing we're going to do um, to make this happen, because I'm going to put a DIN connector here, and I've also got to make a, a bloody uh, SCART cable, a DIN 13 to SCART cable, because cool novelties don't have them in stock anymore. Alright, so I've got the uh, thicker chisel tip on here. I forget the, I forget the number. And uh, I'm pleased to see that the uh, the lugs on the back of the uh, RF modulator are twisted here, so it shouldn't be too difficult to actually get them off. So uh, it doesn't really matter if I uh, destroy the um, lugs, but I would prefer not to. So I'm just going to wedge a screwdriver in the back here just so that I can get some leverage on it. And then I'm going to heat this back lug up like so. Just to lift it clear a little bit. Like so. So this bigger tip is just going to get more heat into the uh, the joint quicker so that you don't actually cook um, the plate around these vias uh, in the board. Uh, because if you do, they'll just fall off. So this should result in a neater job. So I'm doing the sides while I'm prying at the back um, and just working my way around the board like this. I do a little bit at the back, a little bit at the sides. They'll start to lift up. Uh, I've got the iron on 450 degrees here. It's absolutely great iron. I've had this iron for over six months now and I absolutely love it. Okay, so a little bit more at the back, so we're nearly at the point where the back lug is going to lift out, as you can see. The board's bent a little bit with the tension, but uh, that shouldn't be a problem. Let's heat that one a bit, heat that one a bit, and we should be just about ready to let go at the back, nearly. So that lug at the back's just come away, so we should be able to lift from the side now. Ah, so we're just wicking away at the back to get rid of that gob of solder. Right, is it going to come away now? Should do. There, it's loose at the back, finally. And we continue heating the sides. Uh, just felt it give way on one side. There we are. It's just lifted free. And it's going to lift. There it is. Right, so it's completely lifted free now from the side and the back, and everything's still in one piece. So there we can heat this back pad up, and it's just melted, no problem at all, straight through. And then we just do away with these little wires here, like so. And there it's off. So the modulator is off nice and cleanly, and you can see 
There is no damage to the board. Obviously we're going to clean that up and uh, wick all of the solder away. No scratches, no muss, no fuss. So let's get some flux on the board. I think we'll have to go in from the top. Uh, and this is a big area of uh, ground, but the iron has no problems with it whatsoever. Alright, so we just clean up this area with a little bit of uh, IPA and some kitchen roll. See all the crud that's come off there. I'm actually thinking about getting a, um, a microphone boom and modifying it to uh, as a as a movable camera mount. I've started to watch Adamant IT, uh, excellent channel. Um, a fella called Graham King, I believe, who uh, runs a little computer repair shop in Southwest England. I was run into his channel the other day. It's uh, a rapidly growing channel, very interesting uh, repair videos, not of um, vintage uh, equipment so much, um, but PCs and laptops. Uh, but he has a, he uses webcams, but he has a, a modified um, mic stand, so he can pull the camera right into closely to the uh, to what he's working on, um, and it's very effective indeed. Um, so he doesn't need. Uh, a zoom lens camera or anything like that, so uh, yes, I'm interested in getting something like that. Alright, so there we are, so there's the um, RF modulator removed from the board without problems, all nice and cleared and cleaned. You can get that in focus for you. So now we can, up at the back of the board here, we can fit a nice DIN 13 connector. Um, and that's going to be wired up to our uh, Sophia, which is going to go down here, uh, where GTI is. And a little flat ribbon cable uh, joining the two together. And then we'll plumb in the audio as well to the same jack. Make a scart cable, cut a little hole in the back of the case, and then we'll be done. So let's, uh, I think the next thing we'll do is we'll replace the uh, GTI socket with a precision counterpart. And... Uh, Take it from there. All right, so now let's take off this old uh, GTIA socket. Uh, I'm just gonna preheat the board around here a little bit, and then I'm gonna prise the frame off. This is the same way I did the uh, the other two sockets, the CPU and Antic. I find this to be the quickest way. I'm going to turn on the desoldering gun as well, because I'm use that to clear away the solder and the holes. So I don't want to melt the frame, I just want to heat things up a little bit, just so it will pop off a little bit better. And there you go. So we should just be able to unhook this like so, with a bit of leverage. So there's the uh, socket frame removed. I'll just use the heat gun to get the take the legs off. And be careful with this. Hit it from an oblique angle. We don't want to uh, cook the board.
go. Pull them off. Because these will be all over the place, so just tip them off the board. Pick away anything that uh, didn't fall off. So we don't get any nasty shorts later on. Better tidy up, throw this out. Alright, so there's the uh, cleared site. Alright, so we're just going to add a little bit of uh, extra leaded sole here. I'm going to have to put my glasses on. And the area is still nice and warm, so we should have no problems at all. That's it, and we'll remember to clean out the, the soldering tool, of course. And now we can turn that off. Peace. Right, so after using the uh, desoldering pump, that's what we've got. Come on, focus. And I'm going to go over that with uh, some wick. I've still missed uh, another leg at the corner there. That's not a problem. And we're going to add some lovely flux. Just give it a bit of extra help. There we are. Get our wick. Now I'm just going to basically drag the wick along the side here and that's just going to hoover up all the excess solder apart from that one in the corner of course there we go and same at the front I'm not spending too long I'm going quite quick there we are right so I'll show you what that looks like so that was just dragging the wick along both rows once uh, with flux. And as you can see, it's completely cleaned up. I'm going to check the back. Uh, I'm going to hold it up to the light just to make sure that I can see light through all the holes, which I can. If I notice anything on the back, I'll just give it a bit of extra help. Looks pretty good. And you have to be careful because there's some traces running right between uh, the vias there. So it's very important if you get a, uh, a via twisted or warped at any time. When you uh, replace, uh, when you remove the socket, it's very important that you uh, ping them all out and make sure there's no shorts before you put the socket in. So let's give that a clean carefully with... Uh, some IPA and paper towel. There's always a chance that you've just got a little burr line there somewhere you could just rip something off the board. Um, so just go nice and gently. Looks pretty good. And then I'm going to check those uh, check those traces that go between the vias just to make sure there's no shorts. Or no chance of shorts when you put the, the socket on. So once it squeaks, you know it's clean. There we are, very nice. That looks pretty good. Just blow all the bits of paper towel away and I'll show you what that looks like. A perfectly uh, removed socket, all ready for the uh, precision socket that's going to go in its place. I'm going to check that we haven't broken anything. I don't believe I've broken anything, but I'm going to check nevertheless. Let's put the meter in diode mode. And check those densely packed vias. Yeah, we haven't got a short there. No short there, I don't think. No. 
Not there either. I'm actually going to check that out with the magnifier as well, just to be absolutely certain. Yes, that looks very good. So we're ready for the new socket, which is uh, helpfully already sitting underneath the Sophia. So what we'll do is we'll put this socket in and then we put the GTIE back in and just be absolutely sure that everything works before we put the Sophia in. And I really do want to get this flat because um, if the socket isn't flat on the board you've got more chance of solder bleeding out the top side and that's when you're liable to create shorts inadvertently. Um, all those little traces rather sneaking in between. Okay, socket in place, now the moment of truth, let's put the GTI straight back in the socket, switch the machine on and see if it still works. If it doesn't, we've done something wrong. And as you can see the machine boots, so it's all good. So let's press on. All right, I've got my little template there, taped to the board. This is for the DIN 13 connector. So now I am going to uh, just punch, punch in those uh, holes. Okay, now I'm using a one millimeter drill bit here. Here we go. Okay, so that should be good. And there we are, we've got our perfect little array of holes there. More or less perfect. Yeah, one or two of them went a little bit off course, but uh, should be fine. And the next thing we need to do is grind away some of this uh, copper on the top. Uh, otherwise we'll short all the pins out on the connector. So let's go ahead and do that now. Copper ground away, ready to fit the connector. All right, so that's the hole cut. I didn't uh, fill in the whole thing. Um, I have showed this several times before, but it's turned out very nicely and it lines up well. I will show you. I've just popped the uh, connector on the board loosely there. Um, I actually, if you can see it, if it will focus. Uh, I broadened that hole that had gone off off kilter a little bit. I just used the uh, the same Dremel tip that I cut the hole with, so that pops in there perfectly, so no problems at all. So I'll pop the board in just so you can see how it's going to look. Make sure that's flat, and there we go. There's our new connector. I think the board could actually do with a little bit of a retro bright if we ever see the sunshine again in the UK, uh, which is of course quite uncertain. So we just need to glue the connector in onto the board, which I'll do next, and then wire it up and uh, well, yeah, we'll be able to put the sofa in and actually test it. So I use hot glue to glue this in um, because I don't like epoxy because it's quite brittle. Um, so what I do beforehand while I'm waiting for the hot glue gun to heat up, I also preheat the board and this prevents the glue from setting too quickly so it just gives you a little bit of uh, leeway as far as manoeuvring the connector is concerned 
uh, just so that it's nice and flat because if you don't preheat the board uh, you may find that by the time you're ready to push this connector on top of the board uh, the glue started to harden already and uh, it creates problems. So we're going to heat the board a little bit while the hot glue is warming up. It doesn't need to be massively hot, obviously, just warm enough to uh, prevent the, the glue from uh, cooling off on first contact uh, with the board. And apply some glue. Don't need loads. Come on, get in, this swine. All right, that's on, nice and flat. So just let that set. Lovely. And if for any reason this doesn't go on straight, you got the hot air there. You can always uh, reheat things, uh, probably from the back and uh, move it around again, melt the glue again. But that looks like it went on uh, perfectly first time. Um, there's our solder points where we can solder the, I'll show you it now, where we can solder our wires. So we'll make the, uh, the ribbon cable come from the top side of the board through that little slot and over to the back there. Now, do I have to move? Ah, I've got to do something else here. I've got to remove this socket uh, because it's going to block uh, the back of the Sophia board. So I've got, that's I forgot to do that, that's sort of expected actually, but uh, yeah, not a way, so we need to desolder that as well. Now that should just drop out now, pretty much. Come in, yep. And be careful because this is a critical section of the board as well, the RAM multiplexers and whatnot, so I'll be careful not to damage anything. That's kind of coming out. Yeah, sort of. Something came out. Okay. Take the rest out with me. Okay, so there's our removed socket. Come on. And we're going to solder the chip directly back in there. I'm just going to give it a quick visual inspection as usual. And it does indeed. It looks very nice. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I'm holding the chip in, by the way, with uh, with my finger on the other side here, just to be wondering why it's not falling out. That only works if the stuff's near the edge of the board. If it's in the middle, it gets a bit more tricky. So after this, our Sophia should fit nice and flush. It should just clear the side of that, uh, that DRAM at the front. Right, so I'll push this in carefully. There we are, it's cleared that chip. And if we push the GTIA chip in, there it is, it's gone in nicely. So there, there we are. So that uh, Sophia is in, nice and flat, no problems at all. So really, all that remains here is to uh, actually wire this cable up. Um, and uh, that's interesting in itself because I need to remind myself what the uh, wiring plan is here. I have no idea what the wiring plan is. So I'm going to go away on the internet and see if I can find out what the pinout is um, for this cable here. Alright, so in an effort to keep the uh, video reasonably short and concise, uh, I've skipped ahead a bit. Um, 
So I thought I would show you the end result and uh, it looks quite neat. I'll just show you around the wiring. Um, so here we've got the uh, the Sophia board. It's plugged in as you saw before with the uh, the chip unsocketed behind it. Um, I did find the uh, pinout online. There's a couple of helpful documents. Just a Google image search that uh, brought out the pinout for the um, for the the DB9 connector that was originally on the end of the cable. So I was able to cross-reference and just draw a little diagram um, of that connector, which gave me the uh, the pinout here for the ribbon cable looking. Uh, from the front of the machine, and then I cross-referenced that with the 1088 XEL schematic, uh, because I'm using the same pinout for the uh, the DIN 13 connector as is used on that machine. And luckily, I managed to get it right first time, and uh, got a picture first time. Uh, the additional connections we've got here, of course, are um, for audio. And so the audio is, of course, mono audio split across both channels. And I've hooked up Chroma on the legacy video circuit as well, which you always need to do on the 800XL. I've added 5 volt, uh, 5 volts to the PBI connector. And I had to grind out this little slot a little bit just so it would actually um, accept the, uh, the ribbon cable. I tore off the, uh, the unused ninth um, strand, which was kind of the index strand, if you like. Um, which isn't needed anyway. So this is an eight-way connection. One of them is uh, V-Sync, I think, and the uh, or H-Sync. I think H-Sync, would it be H-Sync or V-Sync? Anyway, one of the sinks isn't needed. We just needed C-Sync, composite sink, and one of the grounds I just chopped off, um, which wasn't needed. We've got a ground already, so there we are. Now I've tethered that connector to the board. It's already grounded because it neatly matched up. I was able to solder it to what's left of that lug there, so the connector is absolutely solid. And I think that's everything. So uh, we can uh, power it up, give you a little look at what both video outputs look like. And turn it on. So we pull the monitor out a bit. This is the uh, Sophia RGB output, uh, which looks uh, very nice. And if we switch over uh, inputs to the S video input, and we get reasonable, uh, a little bit blurry. I, this board doesn't have the blurring cap on it. There may be something I can do to sharpen that up. I'm not too sure. All right, so here's the uh, assembled machine. I haven't screwed the lid on yet, of course. Uh, could do with a bit of a clean, and I think if we, as I said before, if we get the opportunity, I think we could give it a little bit of a a complimentary retro bright, I think, uh, would be a nice gesture if the uh, owner is agreeable. It's quite yellow along the front there, so it would uh, be drastically improved. I like the keyboard on this one. It's, uh, what make is it? It's AWC, but it has the nice sort of narrow um, spidery lettering on it. It's nice. Still got the protective film on the cartridge doors. Uh, but this, yes, this looks a lot whiter than it does in, in reality. Uh, the hole that I made for the... DVI connector, which is dead centre in the picture there. That turned out quite nicely. I'll go into self-test. And of course we'll check the uh, keyboard. And it looks it looks very nice and sharp. Much nicer than it does on the camera, in fact. It's uh, basically the kind of quality you get from VBXE. Pretty much identical there. And this uh, Sophia will also output component video. Uh, we didn't go down that path. I haven't really thought about how you would wire this up unless you wanted to put component connectors on the back of the machine, which probably wouldn't look very nice. But yeah, I don't know uh, if there are any more upgrades that'll end up going in this machine, but it's it's been uh, very nice to work on. Lovely board, fully socketed. Um, really glad that I brought it back to life. So yeah, that's Sophia RGB. Sorry it, uh, it's been a while since uh, I've published any videos, but uh, you know what, with... Uh, the way the things are, it's uh, sometimes hard to hard to work up the enthusiasm. And as you can see, I'm uh, making sure that I stay safe, uh, stay safe at all times uh, by taking sensible uh, precautions. Um, masks, to me, they don't didn't seem to offer uh, sufficient protection, so I've gone for the full uh, headgear here. 
and uh, you know full disinfecting of, uh, of myself uh, at all times and uh, that uh, that has kept me in, in fine fine fettle and uh, good health for uh, for months on end and uh, obviously this doesn't affect your breathing in any way shape or form <coughs> perfectly reasonable uh, so yes thank you very much for watching and assuming I'm able to stay safe I'll uh, see you in the next video uh, so bye bye for now